Good morning, First Baptist Church family, and thank you for joining us as we continue our Holy Week devotional series together. We are using a resource provided by the SALT Project, which we have emailed to you. And if that email is buried in your inbox, you can also find it at fbcgso.org. If this is the first time that you've noticed this post, I invite you to go back and watch Courtney's video from Monday, where she outlined the, the week and the process that we're following, and Chris's video yesterday. On Monday, Courtney illustrated how we can use a Holy Week wreath to mark our time together this week as we walk towards the darkness with Christ. Yesterday, Chris showed us how he is doing that in his home using what they have. And today I am going to show you what we are using in our home. I'm not quite sure how, but we own only one candle. <laughs> in our entire house, one candle. So I hope this serves as, as an example that you can use what you have where you are to participate in this devotional series this week. This morning, I have lit this one candle, symbolic of the Christ candle. Will you join with me in prayer? Christ, our God, your love is poured out in death for our sakes. Hold us in your embrace as we seek to walk toward the darkness of this holy week with you. Comfort us with the promise that no power on earth, not even death itself, can separate us from your love. And strengthen us to wait until you are revealed to us in all your risen glory. Amen. And today's scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus's feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. I'm remembering God's hope and God's peace and God's joy. and God's love. The scripture passage is such a great character study. Here we see dinner among friends. The, the friends are gathered at the home of Lazarus who's been raised from the dead. And Martha is being Martha and going and doing and serving. And Lazarus and Jesus are enjoying table fellowship and Mary, being Mary, had a sense about her that pulled her away from everything that is usually conventionally normal. Just as she sat at Jesus' feet to learn from Jesus' teachings, once again, Mary's sensibilities didn't make sense to anyone else except for Jesus. She loosens her hair in a room with men. An honorable woman never did that. And then she pours perfume, expensive perfume. She pours it out on Jesus's feet, also not done. 
Maybe sometimes expensive perfume is used to anoint the heads of kings, but it's not poured out on feet. And then she touches him. She touches his feet with his hair. And a single woman doesn't touch a single man's feet, even among friends. That's not what you do. And there's this bizarre act that again, doesn't make sense to anyone except for Jesus, who understood it to be a prophetic act and a lavish gift to him before he would undergo such suffering. And what feels like such a bizarre and heavy time for maybe all of us, I wonder if today's scripture helps remind us and open us to God's invitation to loosen our sensibilities of what is prescribed, what is normal, maybe to loosen a hold of our own expectations of what we should be doing in this time, of what we should be accomplishing in this time, of what we should be feeling, of how we should be acting, of all of the things and the expectations that perhaps we are putting on ourselves. How instead could we choose to open ourselves, to offer ourselves and our hearts and our sensibilities to our Savior lavishly in a way that may not make sense given everything going on around us? What if we chose to turn off the news? What if we chose to turn off our text alerts? What if we chose instead to open our souls to taste and to see and to hear and to smell and to know? that God is good and God is with us. And maybe we can offer God a gift of our presence and ourselves as we walk with Jesus towards the darkness, journeying together this holy week. Will you join with me in prayer? Creator of the universe, you made the world in beauty and restore all things in glory through the victory of Jesus Christ. We pray that wherever your image is still disfigured by poverty, sickness, selfishness, war, and greed, the new creation in Jesus Christ may appear in justice, love, and peace to the glory of your name. Amen. And now in our devotional time together, we are invited to sing together. You don't want me to sing for you and I'm not musical enough to be able to play anything for you, but I am reminded of the words of the hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, which I would love to read with you now. O oh soul, are you weary? and troubled. No light in the darkness, you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Through death into life everlasting, he passed and we follow him there. Or us sin no more hath dominion, for more than conquerors we are. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Thanks for letting me be with you today, and we hope you'll join us here tomorrow for our next devotional lesson together.